to record and let's um i'm going to live stream that in our facebook group you should come um to our facebook group lynn i don't use facebook <laughs> oh you don't okay no. anyway, then so it should be um streaming anytime soon hoping the technology works let's check there we go i think it's working isn't it guys this is quite a new thing for us so um oh there we go oh someone else is coming sarah's coming um, Laura and Sasha, can I ask you to check that we are live on Facebook and that it's all working very well? It's all working very well? Yeah. Yeah? Okay. Wonderful. Right. Well, let's um, get going then. So everyone, thank you ever so much for um, joining our nine-day um, French masterclass. Um, I'm going to um, start today with talking a little bit about my background for those of you who don't know me and what qualifies me um, to be here today. My experience of learning and teaching foreign languages is extremely relevant to the content of this um, masterclass. And um, I also want it to be a two-way conversation. So I'm gonna go over how we are going to structure um, all the sessions each week. And as I was just saying in our little private group, um, we are going live every day at 12 o'clock. This will be streamed in our private Facebook group. And then we will play the recording every night at 7 p.m. in the Facebook group. But you'll also receive it for those of you who are not on Facebook by email. Um, and I'll be available every night between 7 and 8 um, UK time to answer any questions you may have. So I really want to start by talking a little bit about um, myself, my experience of learning a foreign language. So we were just talking about this. I am from Franche-Comté in the eastern part of France and a small place called Jura. Now, it's an absolutely wonderful place, extremely unspoiled, but it's fair to say that it is um, a far cry from an international, you know, metropolis where I was uh, bound to be learning a foreign language and be surrounded by a lot of international people. This is not what my upbringing was like. Very tiny little village um, in the eastern part of France where you'd be lucky to find one person who could actually string a sentence in English or any other foreign languages. So bilingualism just really wasn't on my um, family's radar. Also, you know, I'm not, I wasn't, and I'm still not um, um, an academic high flyer, okay? So neither of my parents spoke a foreign language. There was no opportunity to learn a foreign language where I came from. And the reason why I often talk about this um, in my story is that looking at my background and what was given to me, I really do believe that if I have managed to become bilingual, then anyone can as well. You don't have to have had a bilingual upbringing. Obviously, it helps. We've got two people um, and I'll introduce later today who are running this masterclass with me. Both of them have had a bilingual upbringing and I think it's absolutely wonderful. It would have been my dream, but it is not necessary. I think you need a real desire, real willingness to learn. You need to have support from um, a language specialists and professionals, but you also really need to know how language mechanics work. And I really want this masterclass to be all about this. So being bilingual has opened many doors for me. This is also something I talk about um, quite a lot. I've traveled, I've met new friends, I've had career opportunities, it allowed me for my business to network in many different countries around the globe and as a result of this what bilingualism did to me 
was really help with my self-confidence. And that is huge to me. That's what I talk about all the time when I talk about um, learning and being confident in a foreign language. So I'm really here today because I want to help you towards um, your own bilingualism. You may not want to be fully bilingual. You may just be here because you want to get by. It doesn't matter. Bilingual Bilingualism um, can take different shapes and forms. A lot of academics argue on what bilingualism really means. As far as I'm concerned, I, I'm here to help people to where they want to be. So what really qualifies me, this is a little bit about my story, but what really qualifies me um, to be here today and telling you that I've got all these wonderful things to share with you that are going to help you to learn French. Um, I didn't graduate from university, unlike most of my staff, if not all of them, um, I didn't graduate from university. I learned everything on the job. And once upon a time, I had a huge imposter syndrome because of this. I found myself evolving professionally in what is seen as a, an academic industry. And I was the one who did not get the degree. And I was the one who didn't even study um, a foreign language or linguistics at university. So I felt like a little bit of a fraud. And I'll tell you about how um, the kind of story unveiled my own professional story later. But I felt a little bit like a fraud. Interestingly enough, as I progressed and as I started to develop my uh, businesses in the language industry that I am truly passionate about, I come to realize that what I once saw as a weakness was actually a real strength. Why? Because unlike a lot of my colleagues, and please hear me out because I absolutely not dismiss the idea of going to university. Unlike my colleagues who had learned um, kind of, who had a lot of preconceived ideas on how foreign languages should be taught or who had learned that methodology or that one. I didn't have any of this. So I had to learn it all by myself. There was no formatting in my head as to how languages should be taught. I learned English at school for about, so in French education, it's what, seven years. Um, then I went to America where I was an au pair for a year. So I had a real practical experience of the language, which was really helpful. Um, then I did um, further my education through various courses and did a little bit of business English, but I never studied languages further than A-levels or baccalaureate. So I felt that because I didn't have all that knowledge and experience um, of having gone to university and having learned things the proper way, I overcompensated by working, 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 working. I took, when I first set up my little French tutoring agency, I never said no to anyone. There isn't a client I said no to. I traveled miles just to deliver one hour class. I taught young children from the age of three, my first class with, with um, four or five children who were three, my hands were sweating. I was so nervous, it was incredible. I taught uh, children at primary school, which I specialized in for many years, teenagers, um, adults, professionals, anyone. I worked in very deprived areas in the UK. I worked in extremely wealthy areas in the UK. I worked with people who were extremely able. I worked with people who were extremely challenged. And so this experience was exhausting because I did all of that whilst um, having two um, young children within a very short period of time. But it was extremely valuable. To me, that's really how I built my business. That's how I also built a successful team. And that's how, most importantly, I have managed to bring results to my students. It really is 
through my experience. I never took anything for granted. I never um, thought, oh, that's a book I've been given, let's just follow that. I questioned everything, I researched everything. Every time I worked with one client, I would spend hours planning the lesson, researching how they were learning, what was working, what was not working. And actually I, did, I didn't realize it at first. I realized it later that the reason why I was doing all of this is because I had a massive imposter syndrome of not having gone to university and not having any qualification to teach French as a foreign language, which I now see as a godsend because I don't think I would have come that far or I would have learned that much or I would have put so much time into all my own learning to then apply to my students or all my research if I had had a glorious degree. Now, to go back a little bit about my story, I started exactly 20 years ago in July, 2022. Um, pure accident um, you're probably not interested by that I'll tell you that over coffee and wine when we get to um, the end of the sessions and we have really open conversations um, at the end of the nine days um, of, the, of this master class but I, it really happened by accident for me a, a really fortunate accident I fell into education by accident and, and became passionate about it but originally I set up a French tutoring agency which was called Bleu Blanc Rouge and I ran that agency for six years I used to um, um, organize breakfast club, lunchtime clubs in schools and nurseries, after school clubs. I used to go around to people's houses. Um, some companies would ask me to come and teach their staff. So it kind of snowballed and grew over six years. And then one day I realized that I wanted something that was bigger and better. I was still truly passionate about what I was doing but we were just not getting the results that I was after for my students. So again, I sat down and I thought, right, I need to rethink this. Um, what's working, what's not working? How can I serve my students better? And then came the idea of the Vici Language Academy. So full-time professional language academy where we would have premises um, and online, presence as well because we've been online for, for for nine years I think now eight or nine years um, and that's how um, the academy was born we then grew and um, started to offer language programs in 11 different languages and then about three or four years ago we opened a branch in France um, but all of that to say that I didn't really get into teaching because I was a genius at foreign languages. I mean, you know, I speak two. I learned three and I speak two fluently. I have a lot of friends, people I've met um, whilst networking or traveling or members of my staff who speak way more languages than I do. I loved my job from day one in two languages because I could see the confidence in people when they achieved something that's deemed to be academic, when they were told that they would never be very good at languages, when they thought that learning a foreign language really wasn't for them, a little bit like me, it wasn't on their family radar, they had not been brought up into a bilingual family, how could they possibly one day speak two languages proficiently? And to me, when I saw um, the face of my students and, and the confidence that they were getting and their huge feel good factor, it made me absolutely adore the work that I was doing. And that's the reason why um, I've kept working at it all these years. So that's a little bit about my background. That's a little bit about my story. That's a little bit about why I'm here today. Um, in terms of the nine day masterclass. So what I wanna say is that this needs to be a two-way conversation. So I'm going to deliver some content. Members of my staff are going to be here as well um, most days. Um, Sometimes it'll just be delivering the content and they'll be supporting me and you during the class. Sometimes they'll also be delivering their own content. But it's got to be a little bit of a two-way conversation. So if you have any questions, put them in the chat. 
If I can answer them straight away, I will. If it's a private, um, like a personal message to me, then I can um, call you or email you or WhatsApp you later. If we can, if my staff and I can answer it straight away, then we will. Um, I've got Laura and Sasha with me. So um, Laura is a French and English coach. Say hi, Laura, so we can see you. Hi, everybody. Hello. There she is. There she is. So Laura is a um, French and, and English um, language coach. She is also the manager of our French office. And the second assistant is Sasha. Say hi. Hello, everyone. There we go. And he's my, actually, son number one, who's doing a business internship at the Academy this summer. So he's also there to help and support you. And, and being bilingual himself, um, he's got quite a lot of little tips that he can help people with. So. I just wanted to explain briefly how it's going to work. It is called a masterclass. So I'm going to expect you to do some work as well. So sometimes like last night, you received some documents, some sheets, some little tests that you can do online. Um, you can have a look at them before the class, ideally. If not, please don't worry about it. It really is not the end of the world. I've just realized that I could do this so we can see everyone, which is uh, much better. Um, to me, I really want this masterclass to boost your French um, in a way that it's giving you little clues that you can use when you are studying it. So if you are currently taking lessons or if you live in France, as some of you I know do, but it's a little bit about adopting new good habits in your everyday life that are really going to make a difference in the way that you absorb the language and the way that you memorize it and the way that you retain it, reuse it, et cetera. So, you know, it's not about a quick fix because we know that learning a foreign language isn't. It really is about having good learning strategies that you can um, adopt now, but keep over a period of time. A little bit like a diet, yeah? I often compare learning a foreign language to being on a um, healthy diet. Being on a healthy diet is clearly about being disciplined and it's clearly about having a good routine, but, if you have food intolerance or allergies, by the way, just know I love analogies, don't I, Laura? So you'll he probably hear me uh, um, use a lot of analogies. I love them. Um, when you're on a diet, you can be extremely disciplined um, and you can have a great routine. But imagine that you have some food intolerances or allergies and you don't know about. You're on this you're on this wheel, you think, you know, I'm doing all that I can, I'm being really, really good, um, um, I'm being really, really good, but I'm not getting results. And to me, learning a foreign language is the same thing. If you don't know what works for you in terms of how you learn and the type of learner you are, you could really be working very, very, very hard and be a little bit disheartened that you're not getting the results that you're after. So my job during this masterclass is to really help you find what is going to work best for you. I've got notes here say that I want to show you how to be realistic with your language studies um, in terms of what you can achieve, structured, but really ensure that you have the right tools to make it work to the best of your abilities. Here at the Academy, we're not a translation service. A lot of people hear me say that we're not a translation service, we're a comp comprehension service. What I mean by that is that we're not just here to teach you words, because anyone can do that. Any amateurish language tutor can do that. Any workbook even poorly written, can do that. We're here to help you understand how the language works so you can get better language acquisition. So to me, it's about showing you how the mechanics 
of learning a foreign language actually really work. Now, French is clearly my language of expertise, but all the tips I am going to give you um, really are um, valuable really for any languages, okay? Uh, I'm just going to... Um, you everyone just so we don't get uh the background noise okay so does anyone have any questions so far all good so i think that um every single one of our session is going to last between 20 to 30 minutes to an hour um, I'm here for you throughout the nine days, you know, a lot of time has been blocked out in my diary to really focus on this nine day masterclass um, and, and the participants and the content. So I'm really here for you throughout those nine days. Those of you who are local to us here in the south of the UK, happy to meet you in our gorgeous little academy for coffee and um, for those of you who are watching from america india france africa um very happy to have a, a coffee or a glass of wine uh, online to help you i will be sharing my diary with all of you so throughout those nine days you are very welcome to book a 20 minute call with me uh, at any time when i say that it's going to last between 20 to 30 minutes to an hour it's very likely to be an hour. It can be more. If you have questions, I'll stay online. But it's not about um, the quantity, right? It's not about a really long masterclass. To me, it's about the quality, the quality content um, that will be served to you every day. It's not about having a huge amount of information that you won't be able to digest. And the last thing that I want to say is that we are live, okay? So we're keeping it very real. Um, I don't live in a glass house. This is my office here at the Academy. We have an office dog who is somewhere under the desk. He's normally gorgeous and very quiet, but you never know. Uh, we have a lot of students here at the Academy. We're running a lot of um, English summer schools. So all the teenagers that are here, they might get a little noisy, but you know, this is live. And the last thing that I want to say, and really briefly, I want to introduce uh, my partner in crime, who I introduced really briefly earlier, Laura. Um, Laura will be running um, all the sessions with me. She'll be doing her own session um, next Monday as well. Now, what's really interesting, and that's why I wanted to, to finish on the intro, um, I wanted to finish the intro on that. What's extremely interesting about Laura is that her and I have got very different um, um, experience of um, the language. When I say that I don't have a degree and my upbringing did absolutely not, um, you know, take me to learning foreign languages, it's completely the opposite for Laura. You know, Laura um, 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 grew up in a bilingual family. She is the high, um, flying academic that I'm not. She studied languages at school her entire life um, from the day she was born to now at the grand age of I think 27 uh, was all about foreign languages and that's why her and I work very very well together because I think we are extremely good you know complementary skills. So Laura do you want to introduce yourself really quickly before I got on with the the content of today's masterclass. Sure so uh, hi everybody um, I'm Laura as Natalie said so I as Natalie said I grew up in a bilingual household so my mother is English my father is Belgian so Francophone Belgian so I grew up very much between the two countries between the two cultures between the two languages and um, as Natalie said I subsequently studied foreign languages at university I've done two study abroad placements because as Natalie said I do love the academic side of it and studying and I love just um, finding the new cultures and the new languages. So I'm very much the uh, teaching expert here at, at Vichy. Um, so if you have any questions as well, then I'm more than happy to help you out alongside Natalie. Very good, thank you so much. So now guys, it is your time to do some work. Before we start, 
can I ask you to write down two things? The first one is, what is your main objection to yourself when you think about starting to learn French, improving your French skills, or really pushing those skills because you know you can and want up to bilingualism? Is there an objection in your head that keeps coming up? Write, write it down on your notepad. Please share it with us um, if you want to. I'd love to, to um, see that in the chat. Please listen to your guts, okay? Don't really listen to your brain. Listen to your guts. What are your guts telling you? when you're telling yourself that you are going to start learning French because that's something you really care about or when you tell yourself right I really want to improve my French or when you're being super ambitious and you tell yourself right I'm going to be bilingual in French or trilingual by the way or multilingual Sarah said probably cost and time yeah that's a very good point um, learning a foreign language and being proficient in a foreign language definitely requires time and money. I agree. It doesn't mean we won't be able to help, by the way. And the second thing, um, can you share with us what you would like to get out of today's session? So it might be a good idea for me to, to, to um, tell you what we're gonna to cover today. You should have all had an email about it, but let me recap slightly. So during this um, nine day masterclass, we are going to cover four really um, crucial pillars of learning French. And I really hope that that's going to create some breakthrough for you. The rest of the week or the nine days will be spent um exchanging with you bringing on students who can share their stories with you bringing on members of staff who can help you laura's going to do an amazing session next week about um the difference between the french and the english language and things like that but but, but crucially we're going to spend four days going to very important pillars and the first one today is two strategies to kicking your brain into learning French. So you'll know if you've read the email that we're going to talk about personality and color, and we're gonna talk about what kind of learner you are. So what is it that you'd ideally like to achieve by the end of the day? And Lynn, um, I like your, your comment about être moqué par quelqu'un. <laughs> which is possibly what 90% of adults would say. It's a big thing to open your mouth and speak um, in a different language with confidence, 100%. We've got a session on that as well. Um, the bonus session um, this week, which I believe is day five or six, six, is all about this. Okay, so why don't we start with the uh, personality in colour? So if you have done the test that, um, oh, so Joseph said, I would like to know how do we cater to different levels of students in the same class? So Joseph, can I just say, this is not a masterclass for teachers. This is a masterclass for learners. So I'm more than happy to have a chat with you and talk about how we do that here at the academy. Very happy to chat um, about this. But this is a masterclass for learners. So let's talk about personality with colors. Has anyone here um, had an idea about this? Did you ever come across personalities with colors before? So this is something, this is a concept that I came across um, quite a long time ago, we did a lot of, of disc profiling, which you may have come across. 
um, to hear internally. So I did a lot of this profiling when I was doing a lot of business coaching to run my business. And then we use personality um, tests um, as part of the management team. So we knew how to work with each other better. And then I came across personality with Colors Choir, um, Choir a few years ago. And I loved it. First, because as you know, I love colors. But secondly, because I thought this is a much easier way and simply a way to understand each other without going into much depth. The reason why this is relevant to you when you learn a foreign language is that understanding your personality will really, really help you understand how you enjoy learning, how the knowledge connects to your brain, and therefore how you retain it. So I think that I'm going to, um, let me share with you the, um, the document. So you should have had, can everyone see that document? Yeah. So you should have had um, that document in the email I sent you yesterday. Bit of a disclaimer, I am not a life coach. I'm not a psychologist. I am not a specialist in personality in colors. I use it with my team, okay? We use it with our students, but this is not something I specialize in. I know enough about it. I believe to tell you and help you with it, but clearly I'm not, I'm not a specialist. When you look, there's loads of information online about it. And originally it started with four colors, the blue, the red, the yellow, and the green. Now you also find purple, you also find pink, you also find orange. And I hesitated when I prepared this uh, masterclass, whether I should introduce all of them, but I don't believe I should, because I think that um, we want this to be condensed. And we want this to be fairly impactful. We're not looking to, you know, write a thesis about it. When you've done the test that I sent you, when you look at the color that was prominent for you, this tells you quite a bit about how you will enjoy learning. Let me explain. Let's have a look at the red color determined, demanding, competitive, strong will, someone with drive. If that is your color, you are not someone who's hugely patient. So learning with details is unlikely to work for you. You would rather learn fast, get results fast, knowing they are not usually accurate than going into details. You also someone who needs to understand where you can get to. So you will need to learn with a structured language programs that has a start and a finish. Otherwise, you're gonna feel overwhelmed because to you it's not going to make a lot of sense and you don't know where you're going. So what's the point of doing all of this? This is how red people think. Have a look at the yellow. Motivated, enthusiastic, sociable, dynamic, inspire. Yellow people love the fun element in anything they do. So if you are a yellow person, you need fun. You need entertainment. You need... I was going to say distraction, that's pushing you a little bit too far perhaps because you still need to focus, but you really need to um, have a great time whilst learning. Otherwise, you will lose interest really quickly. So you need to find a way of learning that provides you with a variety of resources, with a lot of touch point of things that you can call upon that are going to be great fun, or that to you are great fun. How about green people? Relaxed, caring, encouraging, patient, sharing. Green people are not particularly after instant results, if after results at all. 
green people want to share. They want to learn as part of a team, as part of a community. They need cohesion. They need to be liked in that team. They need to care for other people. They need to bring element of what they know into the team to really be part of it. And this way they feel good and they start learning. Green people need to learn in a caring and relaxed environment. If there's too much pressure, if there is competitiveness, if it's too result driven, they go away. It's not for them. How about blue people? Logical, organized, analytical, questioning and cautious. These people love spreadsheets. So if you're a blue people, get your Excel out and start to do verb spreadsheets because that's very likely going to work for you. Blue people love the details. Unlike red people, if they don't have a huge amount of details in everything that they learn, they feel they're not learning anything. Their thing is a bit worthless. As language coaches, we come across blue people who go, but I don't know this and I don't know that. How can I get there? And it's like, no, no, just like relax a little bit. You don't actually need to know all of that, but they hang on to this, like they need to know. It's crucial to them. Everything's got to be um, logical. Everything's got to be um, um, structured, analyzed, well put together. Otherwise to them, it's a little bit overwhelming and they don't see how they can progress and learn. So what color are you? From what I said, does that ring true to you? And are there any little things that you feel you could implement to try and help yourself with learning French, depending on um, the color that you are? Would anyone like to share with us? So you see, that's interesting, guys. Look, blue, let's do it right. Red, let's do it now. Green, let's do it harmoniously. And yellow, let's do it together. You have that document, by the way. Have a look at it. This is part of our staff's training. All our staff have to go through training on personality with colors to help their um, students better. So would anyone like to share their colors? Where am I? Let me check. I think I'm in Heinz 57. I love that. One of the first expressions I learned, Lynn, when I moved to the UK. I like that. It's a really good one. And Sarah said, I think I'm the same as Lynn. I like it. There's, there is an area I need to be more of. So just know, guys, that when you do that personality with colour, there's it's a little bit like the next thing we're going to work on about what kind of learner are you? You know, let's face it, you're never all one or the other, but they should be a prominent one. Let's take Laura as an example. Laura just said, I'm a yellow with a hint of blue. And this is so true. Laura and I have been working together for two years. And Laura is always enthusiastic about anything that can be done as a team, anything that's new to the company, any new project, she's there. But I also need her being the manager of the French office. And so she has to deal with staff and clients and writing language programs. And I need her to be very well organized. So the blue is very good. She writes out language programs. Um, and in France, we work with government funded programs. So we have to be extremely thorough in how they are written. There's a um, extremely tight procedure you need blue people or people with a hint of blue to do that. Otherwise it's a mess. So Sarah says, I like that. I do like a spreadsheet and can be competitive with myself. So I need to be more green and yellow. So 
definitely you could be a little bit of red as well sarah because red people are very competitive but competitive with themselves by the way you don't have to be you know competitive with others um i think that it's helpful to know your type of color so when you study you are aware of it and you can work around it if it's not helpful so my personality color is red with yellow so my 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 highest one is red but yellow is not far off either and that's definitely me you know i'm very determined i'm rather impatient but i also absolutely love to work as a team i love the fun element of running loads of different projects in the company that's why for example i need to work with with blue people so they can organize my stuff but when i learn i know that i don't like details so i have to think about this i have to you know the minute i learn something new like I intend to um, also um, learn a foreign language soon. I know for a fact that the minute my language coach is going to look at, show me the details of the language, I'll be like, oh, like my body language is going to speak for me. I'll be like, oh gosh. But I know that. So it's okay in the first part of my language program. I've already spoken to my language coach about that. It's like the first part of my language program, don't bring out details. I need to be enthusiastic about it. I need to bring a routine. I need to be happy to turn up um, at each lessons. I need to feel that I'm progressing quite quickly. Remember, I'm red, I'm impatient. I need to see results quite quickly. But once I'm there, I know I want to progress more and I know I'm rubbish with details. So I'm going to go right, deep breath, Natalie. You do need to go through the details. So it's not because you don't like the details that you can't go with it and over it and work with them. But having that awareness of how your personality works is so important so you can really adapt when you are learning. So it's not about, I should be more green or I should be more red. You are who you are. But having that awareness will really help. Does that make sense? Yeah? So have a little think about this. I know there's some of you here teach as well. Think about this with your learners. It's to me, later on this week, we'll bring on um, students who are going to share their experience with you. And all of them have gone through the process of using all those little pillars that we'll teach you this week. For some people, the personality with color has been a breakthrough. But I tell you what, for our team, it's just been an eye opener, a completely eye opener. You know, why some students would suddenly, you know, kind of lose their enthusiasm a little bit or not turn up at class so often. You know, a yellow person should ideally part of the group or at least part be part of a community, should have a lot of fun in what they do suddenly you hit the grammar and it's not so much fun and their interest starts to go down a little bit. So it has been, it's hugely, hugely um, valuable for, for language professionals, but also for students. So I hope that's helped. And again, if you have any questions, put them in the chat, WhatsApp me, whatever, and I can go um, over that with you in more depth later. The second um, trick to really help your brain um, into um, learning French is to find out what type of learner you are. So we looked at the personality. Now we look at the type of learner that you truly are. So I sent you um, two documents, okay, which I also have here. So um, I'll be able to share them with you as well in case you haven't um, downloading them. So there was, you should have had like a learning style questionnaire. Okay. That looked like this. If you haven't, again, ask and I will um, send them over to you. But I just want to tell you a little bit about the type of learner that you are. 
I never knew anything about this until I decided after about four or five years of teaching languages to um, actually go on a course and learn how to train people. I wanted to um, understand how to understand better after all these great experience that I had acquired and I've spoken about at the start of, the, of this session. Um, I thought, okay, I think I do my job pretty well. Let's see if I'm missing anything. So I actually enrolled on a teacher's course. And by then I had been teaching, I think for four or five years. And the trainer started to talk about the type of learners that we are. And we started to do exercises to see if we were more of a visual learner, auditory learner, or kinesthetic learner. I'd never heard any of that before. And to me, it was a light bulb moment. It was a light bulb moment for two different things. The first one is I suddenly understood why I was very good at some stuff at school and not so much others. I also understood why I was preparing and delivering my lessons the way that I was. So the school time, you know, that's gone. But the way I was delivering my class, I realized that I needed to adjust because I am a kinesthetic learner. And we'll talk about this in, in a minute, but I need to do in order to learn. And I was realizing and I thought, wait a minute, I really, I thought I was gonna be a visual learner because when I prepare my lessons for my students, I constantly just do flashcards. Like I constantly have visual aids everywhere. Like I was spending my entire weekends doing stuff. And then I thought, I oh, know I'm not a visual learner. I definitely am a kinesthetic learner. I need to do the stuff in order to then explain to my students how it works. And don't get me wrong, I was creating great resources, but I really had to take a step back and thought, wait a minute, what if I have learners that don't actually need all these learning aids? What if I have auditory learners? I need to look at songs and I need to look at recordings. So for me, being aware of the learning style of each person and my own to start with was really a huge eye-opener in my career and this is something that we go through with every single learner. So if you look at the sheet which I'm sure you have um, looked at, it will tell you the, the style and the preferences that learners have depending on the category they fit in. So here it says, someone with a visual learning style has a preference for seeing or observed things, including pictures, diagrams, demonstrations, displays, handouts, films, flip charts. These people will use phrases such as, show me, Let's have a look at, they'll also say a thing, oh, I see that you've done this. I see that. You see, I'm a kinesthetic learner. I always say, I feel that. So there are people who work well with list, with written directions, written instructions. If you are a visual learner, then please start to adopt that in your learning. If you are working with um, a language coach, then that person should do that for you and certainly should advise you and should give you loads of little tips, but do think about it for yourself. Can you create lists? Can you have some sort of visual aids with you all the time? That is really, really important. If we look at auditory learning, so people transfer information through listening. So they are very sensitive to the spoken word, to noises, to sounds. These people will use phrases, phrases sorry, such as, tell me, let's talk it over, okay? 
So people are happy with just spoken instructions. Some of our learners love voice notes on WhatsApp. That is so much more impactful to them than just giving them a list of things to do, okay? Telephone conversations are gonna be great exercises for them. They're very good at learning songs, even in French. If that is how you are, find podcasts. We have one, French Conversations with Natalie. Go and, go and subscribe to it, listen to it. Does it really matter that you don't understand all of it? No, no, it doesn't at all. Your brain would love to be surrounded by the spoken words all the time. Go on Spotify, do a playlist of French songs. You can't understand half of what they say. Doesn't matter. Your brain is going to love that and you are going to absorb way more um, of the language than you think you are. What if you are, like myself, a kinesthetic learner? So our learning preference is for a physical experience, touching, feeling, holding, doing, a practical hands-on experience. You know, when I said to you, I then understood why I was very good at certain things in school and not so much at others. For example, when I learned about this, and this is a condensed, um, these are condensed information of the entire course that I did on it. But I then realized why I studied law, okay? When I was studying law at university, we had lectures in a massive amphitheater with 500 people. That didn't work very well for me. But then twice a week, we had practical workshops with a teacher in a class of 25. I was excelling at that because we were doing stuff. We were having discussion. We were talking about the subject. When I was younger and I was in, in secondary school, if a teacher said, okay, guys, I need you to work on an entire report. I remember um, one teacher asked us to do a music report. I mean, music was hardly my forte, um, but we had to choose, um, and like an author, we had to write about him, write about his life. I love this. I was researching information in books, no computers, because I'm that old, but I was researching information. I was photocopying them. I was cutting, I was gluing, I was putting them together. I was explaining what it was all about. Well, I loved every minute of it. When we had to sit in a classroom all day long and look at the board and absorb information, I was daydreaming 50% of the time. So, Kinesthetic learner love the practical hands-on experience of what they are learning. These people use phrases such as, let me try. How do you feel? I think the people who work for me would smile when they see that because I say that all the time. So we will perform best with um, new tasks by you know, going ahead and trying them out. That's our way of doing it. For example, if you've done the test, again, when I've done the test, kinesthetic is a little bit higher, but visual is not far off either. When you have done this test and those three learning preference are not far from one another, and you'd really like to know which one really works best for you, can I ask you to try and think about, about the last thing that you've learned that has made an impact on you that was very interesting that you felt you got something out of? How did you learn it? Because I trained at martial arts. And when I trained at martial arts, I did Taekwondo. And when I would be in a classroom with 10, 15, 20 other students, and the instructors were at the front walking around, and they would tell us what to do. In a two minute explanation, my brain would cut off after one minute. I even wondered if it was because my English wasn't good enough and I couldn't understand all of it. Was my brain trying to translate the instruction in French and then 
and 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 then I was trying to understand what it was technically, and I was lost. My confidence by then wasn't great. When I realised that I was learning through experiments, so I needed to watch what they were doing, then I asked for them to show me, and then I could copy what they were doing and then I was learning the move in an instant so why don't you think about the last thing that you've learned and how you best learned it And if anyone wants to share, I'd love to hear it. Using a new computer program, hands-on. Oh, so you like to be hands-on as well, Lynn? Yeah, so do I, so do I. So the... Um, the, this document, which you should have received as well, um, gives you little learning strategies. Um, I can't, there we go. Gives you little learning strategies. So have a look at this. Um, because I think this can be really useful when you try to learn. Especially, I want to say, especially if you are learning at a stage in your life where you have a job, you have children, you know, you have a house to look after, you need to find the strategies that are going to work for you. Um, there is no point trying to do things that are not going to work. So you really need to try and find what works for you and kind of leave, leave the rest. Um, for example, for me, podcasts. So I wanted to learn a little bit of Spanish, so I found a podcast. Really enjoyed it. Is it really working for me? Of course it is, because it's all about surrounding myself with the language and immersing myself in the language, so my ear starts to get used to the new um, Spanish sounds. Of course it's working. Is it the best learning strategy for me? No. But I'm still going to use, pod use podcasts. First of all, it's extremely enjoyable. You can play them, you know, in the car, in the shower, when you walk in, when I walk the dog. But I know for a fact that it is not going to be the best learning strategy for me. So have a look at this document, which you have all received, which gives you lots of little tips on how best to learn. Oh, you don't have that one, Lynn. Yeah, I'll send it over to you, definitely. So the ones with the little strategies. Perfect, perfect. I can definitely, um, I can definitely send that over to you. It is 1 p.m. So um, we can stay live a little bit more if you have um, any further questions. Today, I wanted to introduce myself. I wanted to give you the reasons uh, behind wanting to organize this masterclass, how it's going to work. Um, and today I wanted to cover two really, really good learning strategies on number one, um, how to look at your personality so you can understand how you best learn things. And secondly, the type of learner that you are so you can have the right strategy in place when you either start to learn French, improve your French, or are looking to become bilingual. Um, specifically, if you have objectives, if you know exactly where you're going, and we're going to look at objectives, I think it's in day three, how you set up goals in language learning. But I think that spending a little bit of time going through the documents that we've sent you and just having a little list of who you are, 
how you're going to learn and what you are willing to dedicate a little bit of time um, to do using those different strategies are really going to help you learn faster and perhaps be a little bit frustrated, a little bit less frustrated with, um, with your studies because we all know that learning a foreign language is an absolutely wonderful experience, but it happens in the long run. And that's why those strategies are excellent because even when you get a little bit frustrated and you feel maybe you're in a little bit of a plateau, go back, have a look at this, relearn who you are and, and how you are learning and get back on track with the right strategies for you. So I'm just checking, could you send me the document? Yeah, yeah, of course, I'm absolutely, Sasha, can I ask you to, um, to um, make a note that, um, can you please write your name? Because we only have your Zoom name, which doesn't look like a first name and a last name. But if you tell us who we are, you've clearly registered. Oh, Joanna. Joanna, yeah, we're definitely going to um, send you all these details. Check your spam because everyone should have had all the documents, but please do check and uh, we can get Sasha to send them across to you as soon as we finish for today. So if there's no more questions, um, it remains for me to say thank you. Thank you for joining us. Um, this lesson or, or, or class will be live in our Facebook group tonight. If you wanna jump in, if you wanna uh, catch up on it later, if you wanna rewatch it, and if you have any question, I'll also be live to answer all your questions. So thank you ever so much. I hope today was very useful. If you think that's how beautiful languages are, we think about them all the time. If you think about anything during the day, just email me, just WhatsApp me, and I'll be there to answer your questions. Thank you very much and um, see you soon. Merci, au revoir, bonne journée. Au revoir.